All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. And by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Yeah. 
from the Holy Gospel according to the Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves his home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, friends. <clears throat> Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Very good. So we have so many reasons to praise the Lord, to thank the Lord. This is a wonderful season, a beautiful a season to remember God's love, God's love for all of us. And as we begin, as we begin this new season of Advent, and I would like to start my homily with a, a small joke, or it is very much related to my homily. One young clergyman preaching his first sermon was very nervous. And he started with the text, Behold, I come. Then his mind went blank. And he bravely repeated once again, Behold, I come. And still his frightened brain would not function. So he leaned over the pulpit and repeated once more, Behold, I come. And at that moment, the pulpit uh, collapsed and he tumbled over into the lap of a lady one who was sitting in the first pew and he got up and red-faced stammered oh I am sorry please forgive me and the lady was not upset in the least and replied that's all right I should have been expecting you after all, you warned me three times. <laughs> My dear friends, we begin. We begin the season of Advent, and we have a beautiful collection of readings for the first Sunday of Advent as we prepare for the celebration of Christ coming at Christmas. The central theme of today's readings is watchfulness with hope. Every, every Sunday, these four Sundays, we have a beautiful theme to reflect and prepare ourselves. And the first Sunday, I found the theme for us to reflect is watchfulness with hope. In the first reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, we hear prophet Isaiah expressing the hope of Israel for a powerful manifestation of God in their midst. Let me give you a short, a brief uh, uh, background to the first reading so that we can understand why Prophet Isaiah was praying for Israel. 
Around 600 BC, the Babylonians took the Jews out of the promised land and kept them in exile for about 60 years, which we call the Babylonian captivity. And when Cyrus, the Persian emperor, took over the Babylon, he sent the Jews home. He freed them. And this reading is set in the troubled period when Israel was trying to put itself back together after returning from exile. And to get the flavor of it, just imagine how a contemporary family might feel when they return to a fire damaged or hurricane destroyed or flood damaged home. So the Israel knew that the world they are living is in a big mess. And in this situation, Prophet Isaiah expressed the hope of Israel for a powerful manifestation of God in their midst. The prophet hoped that if God would come into their midst, the people would be faithful to him. And he acknowledged the fact that the people were unfaithful and asked for God's forgiveness and acceptance. In other words, he says, we are not perfect, but we are totally God's to shape. We are in the hands of God. It is God who shapes our lives. We are helpless. It is he who comes to help us. And he, he begged away the father of the chosen people for mercy. And of course, we know this prayer was answered when the Son of God became man in the incarnation. He became flesh at Bethlehem and became the light to the nations to wipe the tears of the people and became hope to the people. And at the end, he also told us that he, or he told us, or he promised us that he would come again. He speaks of that coming in the reading from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 13. We come to the end of uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13. If you read a little before that, Jesus was talking uh, about his second coming. What are the things that are going to take place to his disciples? So he tells us a parable about his coming, his second coming. He says, no one knows that day or that hour. It looks like a man who leaves his house and sets his servants in charge, and they don't know the day of his return. Well, my dear friends, Jesus is telling us that he is going to return. He will come back again. And that should give both hope and sober assessment for our need for watchfulness. And that's what he is calling us to do as his disciples. He says, you don't know when the Lord of the house is coming back, whether in the evening or at midnight or cock crow or in the morning. In other words, he is telling us we have to be careful, discern, and watchful. We have to be on guard. We have to be diligent, watchful, for he will come back again. And that's what exactly Paul was reminding Corinthians in the letter of First Corinthians in our second reading. He tells them, and in his prayer, he prays that they may be irreproachable and stand firm to the end of the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. He tells Corinthians, the God has given you so many gifts. Make use of the God-given talents or gifts or the blessings, the graces that you have received in order to see the Lord, in order to see the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, St. Paul and early Christians understood that there will be the day of the Lord, the day of the end of time, where Jesus Christ will come back to set all wrong and make them right. 
and we need to be diligent and watchful. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, on this first Sunday of Advent, the readings give us hope in this messy and broken world that Jesus would return and set all things right. But we need to be vigilant and watchful. And how do I remain alert and watchful and vigilant in the spirit of today's gospel as we begin this new season? We are so future-oriented that we often forget the present entirely and spend too much time trying to perfect our lives against future misfortunes. We save money to get married, to buy a home, to send the children to college, to retire in comfort, and to protect ourselves against future misfortunes. I think it's all good. It's all good to prepare ourselves. But we need to be more spiritually wakeful and prepared for our eternal life because we can die at any day and that can be the end of the world for us. And that can be a time for us to face Jesus once again. That can be the last day of our life here on this earth. Therefore, God provides various opportunities for us to prepare, to prepare to meet him. And in this graceful season, let us be a little more alert and vigilant of what is happening around us, what is happening within me. And let us live in the living presence of Jesus every day, experience him in the Holy Eucharist, in the scriptures, a little more attentive to the scriptures, what they are telling us in our worship community, in our parish, in our family, and in our own souls and everyone around us. Let us renew our lives in this grateful season, a little more closer to the Lord. May I ask the faithful to be seated. We have enrollment liturgy for the sacrament of confirmation. And may I now invite all the candidates, those who are preparing for confirmation. Please come forward and you can stand in the line. Those are back. And may I now invite the parents, please stand. You have a question for you to answer me. Parents of these children. Parents, you have asked us to help prepare your child to celebrate the sacrament of confirmation. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility along with their sponsor to be your child's primary teacher in his or her preparation for this sacrament. Do you clearly understand what you are undertaking? Parents, please be seated. And students, are you willing to listen to your parents and sponsors? and study with them and all those who are helping you prepare for this wonderful sacrament of confirmation. 
the community of St. Joseph, are you ready to help support these students and their parents with your prayers in preparation of this sacrament? Yes. Lord Jesus, look lovingly upon these young men and women who are preparing for the sacrament of confirmation, their parents, sponsors, and all who will be instrumental in their faith development we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So congratulations, and we continue to pray for you, okay? God bless you. And let us all stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Amen. of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith, let us offer all our prayers. Our song prayer today will be... Lord, hear our prayer, Deus ex ordinos, Senor escucha. Let us pray for the church during this new year of grace. Awaken your people during the Advent watch, O God. Help us all to be on guard for your coming. Bless our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the bishops, and all the baptized. We sing to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Deus ex ordinos, Senor let us pray that the world may meet the challenge of peace. Do not let us wander far from you, O Lord. Deepen our longing for peace. Bring healing to divisions and comfort the victims of war. We sing to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Deus ex ordinos, Senor escucha. Let us pray that we will be attentive in prayer. During this preparation time, help us make room for you in the silence of our hearts, O Lord. May Mary, the Mother of God, show us the way to holiness and inner peace. We sing to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
let us pray for the sick and the suffering. Send your healing spirit to strengthen and renew the ill, especially Matt Reed, James Stevens Sr., Carol Stott, Scotty Duffy, and Emma Thompson, and all who have asked for our prayers, we sing to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us remember the dead. May our brothers and sisters who have kept faithful watch enter the kingdom of light and peace, especially Jenna Manera, Jim Boyle, Jerry Savoy, and James Gibbs. We sing to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for our personal needs in a moment of silence. Keep our families united in love and open to serve one another's needs. As Christmas approaches, may we recognize you in the face of the poor. We sing to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks and praise for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, families, children. Thank you for your blessings upon our parish. As we begin this wonderful season of Advent, we ask you, Lord, that we become alert and watchful what is happening within us, around us, and accept all our prayers. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus, who the world, Jesus. 
Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all each church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the price of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. <clears throat> that when he comes again in glory and his majesty, and all is at last made, last made manifest, we who watch for the day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Ellen Wigner, and our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, we have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, Saint Joseph, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. In your kindness, please remember the family of Jenna Manera, the mother of Deacon John Manera, in your prayers. A vigil service will be held at the Weiss Funeral Home in Allen Park on Monday at 7 p.m., and Mass of Christian Burial will be celebrated on Tuesday at St. Francis Cabrini Church at 10 a.m. Today, in the gathering area of the church, you will find Christmas memorial flower envelopes and Opwatki Christmas wafers. Please see The Voice or our website for all our Advent opportunities, including the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary this Friday. On this holy day of obligation, Masses will be celebrated here at 9 a.m., 12 noon, and 7 p.m. The Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe on Tuesday, December 12th, at Christ the Redeemer Parish at 6.30 p.m. And the Advent Communal Reconciliation Service here on Monday, December 18th at 7 p.m. And lastly, tonight, you won't want to miss our Christmas cantata concert here in church at 6 p.m. It is a free concert. However, donations will be gratefully accepted at the concert. Members of the Macomb Symphony Orchestra, soloists, a huge choir, narrators, and actors, it's the Christmas story told in song, word, and drama. Bring family, friends, and neighbors to this wonderful production. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so I, today evening, this is a good, uh, wonderful program. I expect some of you at least to be there, uh, witnessing this wonderful season, a season of uh, waiting for the Lord with a lot of happiness and joy. And our deacon, deacon lost his mom on Thursday. Thursday. And on behalf of the parish, we would like to express our sympathy and condolence. Thank you. And we, are, we pray for you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I wish all of you, we have a wonderful season of Advent, a beautiful to, to rejoice for the coming of Christ. Let us all stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God.